சொன்னேன் சார் இப்போ நீங்கள் அட்மிட் பண்ணிட்டு நீங்கள் பேசுங்க Uh, good morning dear participants we are on the last day and last session of the uh, webinar and um, it completely involves the application part of uh, our geological science and uh, you can find uh, a very senior person sitting in front of our camera sri s kannan who is a chief geology in engineering geology and geotechnical division corporate office of National Hydroelectric Power Corporation Limited, Faridabad. He has retired from that uh, NHPC. And his topic is on uh, engineering geological studies for large civil engineering projects. So the uh, webinar is as planned as uh, we have introduced the geological evolution of Tamil Nadu and it ends with the application part of it. So that's what we are, our plan. And uh, Sri Kannan sir, Kannan sir uh, is a very experienced uh, geoscientist in the field of uh, geo geology earth sciences he has put his experience more over 35 years in the uh, field he has completed his msc from bangalore bangalore university both bsc and msc from bangalore university and uh, he was uh, briefly working in uh, government of tamil nadu pw department in groundwater department so after uh, getting job in uh, Uh, in uh, nhpc he shifted to nhpc before that he was working as a, a geologist in hydrogeologist in pwd government of tamil nadu he joined uh, uh, the nhpc as a field geologist and he has worked in various various capacities and um, yes uh, in his service of 35 years he has served so many so many uh, projects he has worked in so many projects and uh, uh, created uh, many geo geotechnical structures for the country which is more uh, which is more important for the development of the country's economy and uh, especially in irrigation project and civil engineering projects that uh, sri kannan sir is not a um, ideal uh, ideal person uh, uh, sitting at home after this retirement he was very busy than the nhpc after the retirement because he was a consultant and uh, gmr consultants so he was he was a vice president and uh, ex associate in gmr and uh, consultancy and he is also an advisor for the government of uh, karnataka in bangalore some geological as uh, uh, the clarifications are, are requested to him and he is clarifying that he is an advisor for the government also and uh, in the field of uh, engineering geology he has done so many surveys uh, from the base from the beginning to the end and after the, after the end it has maintenance is involved is is uh, expertise is involved he has he has uh, yes created and he has uh, completed so many hydro electric projects in in uh, very challenging terrains that is more important uh, conducting a hydro electric project in a safety terrain is not uh, that much important he has surveyed detail from the beginning from the beginning we, we can say that from the point a to z he is working and he is still having his uh, he is giving his expertise after his retirement also uh, he, the work Uh, the work he done is involves search evaluation of site of our project structures dam water conductor system channel tunnel shaft power house evolution of reservoir competency appraisal of infrastructure including roads rails bridges and colonies etc you can say so many things all the civil engineering are put together by a geoscientist and he has uh, excellently carried out this work and uh, i can read out his bio data so many uh, so, so many pages are there uh, sri kannan sir i'll stop here yes. of introducing you and i request you to complete uh, uh, the presentation because our principal will be joining shortly so we have to conduct a, a, a brief valediction function also after your uh, uh, talk i request you to take out the sections sir sir please 
Thank you, Gautam sir. Uh, dear all, uh, very good morning. I welcome all of you for this uh, webinar session. I thank, first of all, I thank the principal, Prasamsi College, Geology Department, and especially Dr. Gautam for giving me an opportunity uh, to share some of my professional experience with you all. And here I would like to thank uh, Mr. Charles for giving a, a wonderful uh, seamless uh, connectivity and management of the overall session. And I welcome the students, the scholars, the other professionals who have uh, enlightened us on various uh, subjects of geology. And uh, with this, I will go, my I mean, so a small uh, brief introduction about myself has been already given by uh, Dr. Gautam. So I joined uh, GMR Energy from uh, uh, NHPC after uh, resigning from NHPC, in fact, and uh, joined GMR and uh, from there, I retired as associate vice president, um, worked in uh, mostly in Himalayas. Uh, I have widely traveled across Himalayas for the hydroelectric project uh, locations, uh, right from uh, JNK in the west and uh, to the Arunachal Pradesh in the east, including Nepal, Bhutan. I mean, there is uh, no sector uh, in Himalayas which I have left. I have traveled extensively uh, for the a project from the concept to commissioning. The initially for a, a new project, a selection of site, and then uh, ongoing um, uh, preparation of uh, detailed projects reports, and then going for uh, construction. And some of the project uh, after post construction, uh, like uh, likewise uh, the geology, geology, a varied geology, the young mountains of Himalayas. It is a really a challenging environment, and it has given me a very good. Uh, uh, experience. Um, so I thought I will share with you all. This lecture is to is uh, focuses on the engineering geological studies for large civil engineering structures because it's not. Sorry, Kanan, sir, Kanan, sir. Project is not done. Kanan, sir, yes, sir. share your presentation and then just start. Share your presentation yes. slides. Yes, and uh, I, I'm sorry yeah. for that. I. Uh, uh, I have got all your uh, CV with me, but I, I I just want to brief. That's what I didn't say all these things and all. But you you told everything. Thank you so much, and I'm very sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now my screen is seen. Uh, no sir, not yet. not not yet. Sir. Not yet. Okay. You please share the screen. Yeah, I will share. Now it is visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slide show, yeah. sir. Please make it a slide show. So this lecture is about uh, engineering geological studies for large civil engineering structures. Wherever possible, I will share my Kanan, sir. Kanan, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you make it as a slide show. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, so basically, engineering geology is a branch of geology, as you all know. In other words, it is the application of uh, geological processes and principles for the execution of civil structures. We all know that there are many branches of geology. Uh, I, I will come to it uh, in course of my lecture. Similarly, civil structures also. This may be an, as small as a small culvert or a bridge or a large building, multi-story buildings, tunnels, dams, irrigation canals, etc. These all civil structures have got uh, some unique uh, advantages and disadvantages as far as site condition is concerned. In good, good olden days, uh, even in 1930s and 1940s, people did not give much attention to the importance of geology that, uh, for uh, construction of projects. This led to wide scale failures and cost and time overrun. That is the biggest problem the engineers faced. And moreover, nowadays we are moving to more complex geological environment. The, um, the projects are located in a very uh, environmentally sensitive, geologically complex um, areas where uh, yeah, proper investigation, proper studies, and um, the application of geological um, uh, setup and all these things 
led to the development and the more uh, um, importance for uh, engineering geology. Therefore, people felt the need for proper geological investigation. This led to the development. Now we'll go to my presentation on by one. See here, I, I told you there are different, uh, 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 the, there are many branches in the geology like mineralogy, petrology, structural geology, geoma, remote sensing, geophysics, stratigraphy, paleontology and all. Likewise, uh, the studies for engineering importance, like we have to deal with the rock and soil and we have to do the survey of that area. We have to do the design of design, engineering design for that structure. We have to adopt a proper drilling and blasting technology and also um, the evolving uh, tunneling technology. This is you now every time we are going for some new technology for, uh, based on our experiences. So next is the variant engineering domains. If I uh, discuss, there are buildings. First of all, uh, buildings normally nobody consult a geologist, but they definitely do a soil testing. Or if there is a rock, then they adopt certain techniques uh, to remove the talk, uh, rock and then do the. So that you, if it is a multi-story building, definitely you have to consult a geologist. That's what I feel. And then the bridge for bridge abutments and then the bridge foundation, the geological investigation needs to be done. Then the major structures, if you take up, it is a dam. It may be a small dam. Any dam which is more than 15 meter in height, we call it as a large dam. Then uh, underground structures, it may be a small tunnel or it may be a, a, a big uh, um, uh, cavern, powerhouse cavern. Nowadays, oil storage caverns are also made. A lot of work is um, now going on underground. Recently, we are able to uh, connect to our border areas uh, through underground tunnels. So we all know this. And uh, another uh, uh, big problem which we are facing because we are working in um, Himalayas or remote areas, there is stop stabilization. And then shoreline, as you know, then the highways. So all these things, they, these are the various engineering domains we have, as a geologist, we have to deal with. Then, uh, the, then I will go to the uh, geological principles in engineering geology. Who is an engineering geologist? So engineering geologist plays a pivotal role right from the inception to the commissioning, post commissioning of civil engineering process. That is what we, this is what we should um, take into consideration. The engineering geologist has got a role to play from the beginning to the commissioning and also during post commissioning uh, time. So engineering geologist should be aware. So therefore, what are the things engineering geologist uh, should do? So he should be aware of the relevant approaches for defining a subsurface objective, because everything is not visible on the surface. Certain things are inside. So only a geologist, he should have a proper objective prior to the initial site reconnaissance so that uh, the subsurface site investigation can be designed to yield sufficient and meaningful information. That is what a designer as an engineer he wants from a geologist. So then the objective would be collection so with this in background, we should have a proper objective. The objective is the collection and presentation of geological data, defining general geological environment and the rock mass character. What is the rock is available? What is the type of soil? And what is the type of slope? All these uh, characteristics of the site and basically for the design engineer and for other agencies like a seismic award evaluation, construction material, construction personnel. So these are the things we have to wait. Um, bear in mind. Then, when the, with this background, then you should have an output. Output also should be lucid and it should be easily understandable. The presentation of geology data is as important as the collection of data itself. Uh, if you don't uh, able to present it in a proper format, understandable manner, then uh, the user will be uh, perturbed. The, it should be as graphical as possible. Same way, unnecessary explanation should be avoided. This is the most important. We may have, uh, we, we should have a historical, social, cultural, or any other such feature relevant to the project, but unnecessary explanation should be avoided. That will confuse the user. So 
it is uh, fully recognized that uh, specific investigation programs and studies for individual projects see because each project is unique you cannot apply a principle which you applied in a previous project for this project so each project has to be um, it, it, it is unique and you have to uh, properly realistically it should be uh, studied and uh, it will vary widely according to site uh, site condition type of structure hazard classification design phase etc so therefore effort uh, should be to stick to standard practices as far as possible so for an engineering geologist the term geological mapping always encompasses special attention to the collection of discrete data here i will just try to uh, explain further because uh, uh, the, the engineering geological map is slightly um, uh, improved uh, improved than a normal uh, geological map in a normal geological map we will uh, have uh, lithology we may have uh, the attitude of bed that is of uh, the foliation or bedding or uh, like that then some lineaments and uh, and uh, other topographical features we will have but in an engineering geological map we should have the discontinuity data the fault zones the shear zones and then um, the slide zones all the uh, geomorphology the the condition of the geomorphological processes and the underlying geological uh, structures so this all these things should be Uh, added to the geological map, then it becomes an engineering geological map. So the role of uh, engineering geology in a nutshell, I will say, proper selection of site. So this I will explain with a photograph when we proceed further. Then discover the geological facts, uh, advice in detailed design. So with this uh, two aspects, we will go for a uh, advice, and then uh, mapping and support advice during construction. Uh, during construction also because this is a uh, up to design and then during construction we have to do, give an advice uh, but to, uh, continuously we should do the mapping and then geotechnical monitoring during post construction when once project is um, commissioned then uh, during the running of the project there may be some geotechnical uh, geological problems that we have to be monitor then uh, this above all to minimize geological risk during construction through pragmatic investigation practices that is what we are going to discuss today so now investigations investigation most important is data collection with the help of geological and geotechnical investigations so they, uh, we will go each one by one in the course of the uh, this thing so there are different stages of development of whether any engineering project even if if you are constructing a building for the first first you have to do the excavation and then foundation and then like that but before that you have to see the site whether it is a suitable site so uh, for large engineering project we have a feasibility stage then dpr stage then construction stage then post construction stage so we'll go one by one i am not going because of time constraint i am not going to explain going in detail about the what is be given because these uh, slides are being shared you can go through it leisurely so the stages of development here the pre feasibility stage um, investigation is done uh, then uh, feasibility stage investigation done then dpr stage investigation is done and then construction stage monitoring and data collection and advice support this is done during the um, construction phase then we are going at uh, the, the pre feasibility stage uh, normally we rely on the old literature because we cannot do there will not be budget for a big investment so now well, first of all we have to find out whether the project is feasible or not so we go through old uh, uh, reports literature regional geology regional geology available from geological survey of india then uh, some aerial aerial photographs are procured from survey of india satellite imagery is Uh, or for for nrsa um, um, so they are uh, hyderabad they are able to provide us this uh, uh, then then we do only a reconnaitry geological mapping see uh, probably in 1 to 50000 scale or 1 to 25000 scale uh, uh, this mapping uh, map is uh, mapping is done then a small uh, report a brief report on the geological aspects for the pre feasibility stage then during feasibility stage we go for a regional geological studies 
See, regional geology plays a very important role um, for an engineering geologist should be well versed with the regional geological setup. Then only he will be able to identify what is the right type of rock and then what is the characteristics of the rock, what is the constant mineral constituents in the rock. So all these th things very important. So no, uh, why I am stressing this uh, is because uh, when once uh, a person uh, appeared for an interview and I was in the interview board and uh, I asked him uh, from where you are coming. He said, I am coming from Bhopal. I asked him simple, a uh, simple question from him. From Bhopal to Delhi or travel, they tell just tell me what is the geological formations they came across while traveling in the train uh, all through. To what your what is your observation? So, uh, but unfortunately, he was not aware of uh, this thing, even the geology. So, the, what I find is that is the the young geologist. First of all, uh, there was a beautiful lecture on the geology of Chennai in the previous session, and uh, the, the the persons uh, and the presidency college students they they are very now. Uh, well aware of what is the geology uh, around Chennai. Like that, our surroundings, observation is very important. And at the same time, the literature knowledge is also very important. Then we go for a topographical survey, uh, geological mapping, and then the geophysical survey, because we, everywhere we cannot have boreholes. Some of the subsurface inferences are made through uh, geophysical surveys, then few boreholes only. So depending upon budget, because every stage of investigation involves some expenditure. Then uh, seismicity, this you get from IMD, Indian Meteorological Department, they will be able to give you. So from that you have to infer and what is the uh, status of your project. Then DPR project, that is DPR stage. See, we have to prepare a bankable DPR. Bankable DPR is a DPR which contains very detailed information, whether the, on the feasibility of the project, and the economic viability of the project and the saleable the electricity should be saleable. All the, uh, or uh, the project should be able to um, some, uh, give some revenue. And then whatever the loan you take from the bank, it should be repaid. So for that, a detailed, um, that only if there is a revenue, you'll be able to repay. And for that, your structure should be safe. It should be economically um, uh, feasible. So for that, what we do is a detailed uh, topographical survey a detailed geological mapping, um, subsurface drilling, uh, underground drifting. A drift is a small hole, I mean, tunnel, which is about 2 meter by 1.5 meter uh, in the dimension. And then one person can go inside and then inspect it. Normally, a geologist has to go and then he has to record all the whatever is uh, absorbed. Then uh, small trenches and pits in the slopes you can make. And then, uh, then we go for a geology, geophysical survey. This is a cost-effective, geophysical survey is cost-effective, whereas the drilling, drifting, this um, involves more money. And if you drilling, you get only point information. But uh, with two, three drillings and a uh, geophysical uh, survey along that uh, um, uh, boreholes, then you will be able to connect the gaps. Then we will collect soil, uh, rock pieces, and then do testings, both in the laboratory as well as some test or in situ. Uh, then uh, petrographic studies to know the mineral constituents, uh, some layers, and then uh, also for uh, uh, construction materials, we do petrography studies to know the quartz uh, percentage and other things. Then uh, seismotectonic appraisal. Seismotectonic appraisal is most important because the nowadays many projects are made in a seismically active region. You have to select what is the type of dam and how large the dam, whether nowadays there is a lot of opposition for large dams, and then people want to go for a small dams. And uh, if, a, so if a site is in, in cascade, if you make instead of one uh, big project, you make some four or five projects. But it has got its own disadvantages. Somewhere it is advantages because this operation of the uh, four projects in one river in 10, 20 kilometers. So that, that a tandem operation has to be up. So if you have one big project, uh, there is a flooding problem. And then the seismo, if it is seismically active region, then there is a lot of concerns made by this uh, environmental, uh, environmentalist. So then the, reserve, uh, the DPR investigation continues. We have to do the reservoir competency studies, whether there are the escape routes for the reservoir, whether the, the reservoir is tight or not. And then the in, um, permeability tests are done in the boreholes. 
then construction material so this is the most important aspect construction material i'll come in detail with, with uh, more detail i have uh, prepared uh, this thing then uh, we have uh, uh, testing and identification of quarry sites uh, preparation of detailed project so with all this uh, data with all the, the the results of all this data are um, uh, are uh, compiled and a detailed project report is um, prepared so now i'll go to the next slide so what are the laboratory investigations so you, you, we go for a uh, inaxial compressive strength of the rock then triaxial compressive strength shear test tensile strength shear wave velocity specific gravity porosity so these are all some of the this thing and then grain size analysis uh, these are the laboratory investigations which i am mean, in situ dry density moisture content this is all just for information i am telling this is, these are the standard test which are given in the bureau of indian standards so you have to do first of all you collect the samples While doing the mapping you collect the samples if there is any variation in the lithology each lithological unit has to be tested for this uh, this, uh, this thing then in situ test we do it, uh, do it underground or we do it in the um, uh, uh, surface also so the direct shear test and then uh, deformation modulus so these are some of the techniques which we adopt as per uh, international standards then geophysical investigations uh, say for example resistivity survey that is widely adopted then for groundwater then earth mat design we do geophysical resistivity survey for the um, electrical substations and all then seismic refraction survey just generally to know the depth of bedrock seismic refraction survey is done by then you know, by um, um, blast small holes are made and then um, it is energy is generated by blasting and then the travel and the wave Uh, surface waves and p waves that they travel uh, some distance so uh, along that uh, line of your i mean along that profile you will know the depth of bedrock we uh, in uh, uh, this engineering projects uh, we use uh, refraction survey and uh, for oil and other things uh, we go for a reflection survey in the seismic uh, we do the seismic refraction and also we can know the shear wave velocity of the uh, rock so these are uh, some of the uh, geophysical investigations and it's widely used then uh, we come to uh, post construction stage now uh, the dpr is prepared then we uh, um, go for a post construction stage in the post construction when once the project is completed then you have to see this is a large dam there are slopes here so there is a big reservoir behind this uh, this thing now here the the slope has to be tight but if there is any a slope failures then we have to be careful and then we have to do the study and monitor these things and then give the the geologist has to give an advice see this uh, slope is uh, becoming unstable and then we have to do this type of treatment and uh, or then in the engineering treatment can always be given so the same way the reservoir stability whether there is any leakage in the reservoir whether there is an instability in the reservoir rim whether the reservoir rim is safe whether the water can be um, uh, tight that is the most important and then siltation of the reservoir in one of the previous session of uh, mr prabhakaran uh, some somebody asked the question if the reservoir siltation uh, sedimentation so how it can be so now most of the uh, himalayan rivers carry lot of silt they mean you cannot imagine how much of silt uh, uh, can uh, tons and tons of silt comes and occupies this reservoirs what they do normally they see it's an engineering solution is there there are various solutions each solution cannot be i mean has, has to be unique and it will be project specific for example uh, in most of the dams they have cash iruk corona vandha hello or kuli unama avaru hello if it is a um, barrage there is no problem you open when there is a flood you open the gate all the gates and then the water water flushes the uh, complete silt and the, uh, the reservoir becomes clear then you put the gate then uh, it's in uh, large dams then you keep the uh, you keep the um, crest of the dam uh, low as low as the bed level of the river or the reservoir or uh, maybe um, 
you can have uh, under solutions that that is always a, a design solution under solutions are built so only to flush the um, uh, the silt silt load and uh, in some projects say normally there is a diversion tunnel constructed during the construction construction of the dam and then uh, this diversion tunnels are kept even after only in some projects i am not telling it's a universal in some projects those diversion tunnels are used as a silt flushing tunnel during flood they put all the gates and then open only the diversion tunnel and then the, some of the silt in the reservoir it gets washed away by through the diversion so like that there are solutions this being practiced and it's a perennial problem and uh, everywhere we are having this problem and there's some unique solution has to be evolved i am not telling that problem is totally solved then uh, this i am not going in very detail because of time constraint there are different scales um, by uh, bureau of indian standards they say that a project uh, should uh, have this uh, uh, in this scale we have to do the mapping we have to do the so for doing a geological mapping you require a topographical map so topography map should be of this scale and all i am not going much detail then this is one of the drilling mission which uh, uh, i just i wanted to show this is a core sample see you have taken out the samples so here again there is a bureau i mean indian standard this has been standardized how the core should be collected how it should be stored how what see you can see some markings are there so yeah, the, the direction of because every time a geologist cannot be there at the site so the, when the drilling is going on normally the driller and then some helpers they have to Uh, arrange these things so for, for that there is a standard practice and this standard practice is adopted everywhere you can see the each core is numbered and then the direction of the drilling is so when whenever geologist comes you will any geologist comes he will be able to is a very valuable record because so much of money is being spent some 10 to 20000 rupees uh, per uh, meter uh, so you go for 50 meter you can imagine what is the cost if the, you are making about 10 to 15 borewells for a small project you can imagine how much cost is involved so the preservation and presentation of this uh, data is very important it should be preserved till the completion and also post comb in some of the projects i have gone uh, the project is commissioned the, everything is done and there are some problems then i asked for the old uh, core la course these are the course and then to know to infer say what could have been the problem so these things are should be geologists should ensure that these are all kept uh, forever so this is the record of the borehole uh, data you see the, the, you can see what is the, the lithology is given here the depth is given here then you the core recovery what is the percentage of recovery in the borehole that is uh, graphically presented here then water water loss is there ground water depth is there so what type of uh, casing has been used whether casing has been used or not then a small observation by the geologist and then most important thing is here uh, i think you can follow my cursor the, uh, the um, location of the project the coordinate of the project the elevation of the project uh, when it started when it ended um, so the, all these data uh, should be properly preserved then that, that's i told you a small drift is uh, made in for a uh, hydro project here is a dam project here a one person can go is a geologist engineering geologist who goes it's just for him to go and observe what is the rock type inside and other things um, so 2 meter by 1.5 meter with a um, uh, small tunnel is made it's in a very crude manner it is done and also a full uh, safety precaution is taken so you can see some wooden uh, supports are given somewhere because if you totally support it then you will not be able to see the uh, rock uh, what uh, what it is so th these are all recorded graphically presented in a graph sheet uh, each and every joint is recorded each and every feature uh, like um, if there is any folding or faulting or um the, the there's a variation in grain size there is variation in the lithology all these things are even shear zones clay filled joints open joints all these things are recorded 
uh, through this maybe some 30 meter or 50 meter deep inside the hill where the, your project uh, is located, the dam is located. So this is all very um, important aspects because all these things are done before construction and then the data is recorded and then based on the data, use uh, prepare your uh, geological inference reports and other things and then give it to a designer. And then finally designer is able to make a proper, uh, safe and then uh, economically viable uh, project. That is the most important aspect in this uh, investigations. See, uh, in during pre-feasibility stage, what we do is, this is a, a river is flowing. Uh, you can follow my cars, the river is flowing this way. And then we pro propose a dam here. We take the help of this um, satellite imagery. I mean, this is Google Earth, basically the Google Earth. We do it on satellite imagery also. And then the intake site, the power house may be in underground here. This is in a hill ridge. You can see here in the hill ridge, the underground power house could be there or near the river, you can have a surface power house by excavating this area. This also, so all these things are planned during the uh, in the DPR stage, investigation stage. This is the geological map. So I told you the geological map, the lithology, um, the attitude of beds, uh, different uh, joints, uh, what is that? So all these things will be there. In addition to that, this engineering geological map will contain where you are done boreholes, where you are done a small drift or tunnels, where, uh, where you are done the geophysical survey. All these things are marked in one map and uh, by opening that map, you know, complete investigation, what you are done for that project, what is the geology, everything, one is overlapped with the other, so that everything is uh, seen uh, in a nutshell. So this is the geological section. Of course, it is again for a, an hydro project, a dam, uh, dam project. See, this is the top of the dam. You, see, you can see, this is the, uh, it's a, a sedimentary rock, a sedimentary domain. Uh, so here you have a sandstone and then you have a siltstone. Um, these are the boreholes. This has one side it has got a recovery, other side it has got an RQD. RQD is the percentage, I mean rock quality designation. So this is all graphically presented here in each for each borehole. And then you have uh, tunnels, uh, small tunnels, inspection tunnels, where we go inside and pick up these joints. And if there are any shear zones, other things, it's all marked here. So these are all the discontinuities we have seen observed in the area. So the, with the help of apparent deeper than the, um, uh, that uh, all the geological preparation of geological section, uh, geologists know about it. I did not go into that. So what is important is this uh, borehole locations are given. The top of dam is given and uh, the road, this is the road. So this is how it is. Uh, so it should be as, uh, as simple as possible, at the same time, it encompasses all the details of your investigations so that um, you can have a design engineer will know how much stripping he has to do for founding uh, his uh, dam. So a lot of money is spent on this. Uh, we have to be very careful. So the analysis and interpretation, detailed study, I don't know how much time I'm having. I'm having another 20 minutes. I'll try to cl close it first. Uh, geological mapping is a basic uh, thing and uh, I'm not going into detail, but I only told you as an engineering geologist uh, for a civil engineering structure, whether it is an irrigation structure or it is a, um, a multi-story commercial uh, uh, building uh, structure, or you do a small geological map or it is an hydroelectric project, river valley project, go for a basic geological map, incorporate all the um, um, engineering geological data also. That is the joints, the shear zones, if uh, there is any fault, if there are any investigation has been done and all those things are incorporated in the uh, this thing. Then you go for uh, studies of um, uh, uh, collect during the course of geological mapping, we have to collect the rock samples wherever the lithology changes. And then you do a megascopic study, microscopic study, and then this microscopy study, we normally get it done through laboratories and geological survey of India, uh, different regions, they have petrological labs, we can get it. Then we have to do the proper attitude measurements. Then we have to do a statistical analysis, uh, mean mode median, and then we have to, these things are very important. So uh, there are uh, principles how to draft 
the geology. So the preparation of geological map and preparation of geology, which I have already shown. So now we are going for a data analysis again continued. These are all dust study. Dust study involves aerial photographs, visual and geological, uh, knowing a geological setup, visual structure, you, uh, that is very important. Then the river study, how the river morphology is there. So geomorphology has to be uh, studied. Then the, the gradient of the river, if it, the river is uh, more uh, having gradient, then it will be more violent. Then uh, deposits by river and terraces. The terraces you find along the river, maybe of different ages. You will have, whenever you travel in some hilly areas, you will find along the river, there are two, three levels of terraces. So each ter terrace has got a different age. And uh, depending upon the age, you, you see, if you see the, the constituents of that particular age of uh, terraces will be different from the other terrace, which is overlaying it or underlying it. So, so these studies have to be made. This is a very detailed you know, uh, study is required uh, for uh, this because the geo the geotechnical characteristic of each material difference. If a particular do, uh, uh, ter terrace deposits of a particular domain, depending on the velocity and the flooding and other things, the material varies because river for, for that particular time the river carries a particular material. So these are things that should be studied, and then any major lineaments are there. Any, then a thematic map and all this. I am not going very detailed. The time is short. You have to establish the order of superposition. We have to uh, devise a proper legend, some surface investigation data. This I am not going much. Then uh, stereographic projections are also made uh, with the help of SART. Nowadays, a lot of software is available. I'm going fast. Um, then uh, geophysical survey, I told you where and why, what is the type of geophysical survey that a geologist has to decide uh, because the geophysical survey is a cost effective. You cannot have uh, more, uh, more number of drillings. We can reduce with the, uh, with the um, the, uh, this thing using geophysical survey, we can reduce the cost of drilling. Then small pits and trenches, these are cost effective methods, but you cannot go for a pit more than five meter or three meter or five meter, because again, uh, logistic problems will be there. So then permeability tests are conducted. Um, so these are the, then with the, uh, is all this investigation adequate or not? That is again, as a question mark, because any, uh, any investigation will not be uh, totally, uh, uh, safe and uh, uh, complete. So, so now somewhere you have to put a full stop. So in, uh, this is uh, not going much into the interpreted geological map of the project is uh, prepared. Then an outcrop map of the project. See, this are all for the design requirement. Then uh, supporting studies, this is most important. You have to go to the level of geological support. The seismotectonic site-specific seismic design parameters. Here I want to stress certain things. Uh, the because seismic tectonic study is most important. Many projects are located nowadays are being planned in a seismically active region like Himalayas, where the seismic zone, as per seismic uh, so zonation map, it is it falls in uh, zone five is high seismic zone. So a lot of problems, social problem, uh, environmental problem. People are saying that it is a seismic hazard area. You should not. Go. But uh, we have to have the project. We cannot. Uh, we have to do the nation building. So there, are, there is a solution that we can have a safe for this thing. The only thing is you have to adopt a proper um, say design parameter. For that, we do a site-specific study. Site-specific study is done by uh, Rookie University, Earthquake Department of Earthquake Engineering is there. CWRS uh, Pune is there. We uh, get this conducted based on, they also do based on the, um, uh, uh, the geo major geological structure, like a main boundary fault, density, where these, uh, earthquake, uh, uh, historical earthquakes are there, it has happened, some analysis are made. So we'll not go much detail, but what I'm just stressing is there is a design solution. Uh, even uh, 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 Mr. Prabhagaran in his previous session told that the Kalpang project Andaman, I had also been there, I did the foundation mapping there. And that uh, that project withstood the tsunami, um, uh, the after tsunami, nothing happened because this was that Andaman project was constructed before tsunami. And after this, a 50 meter high dam, nothing happened. The, the, the project is still active, uh, producing electricity. So there are different institutes for rock mechanics, soil mechanics, uh, the, the system technology, like that. Then we are going for a, I mean, 
So the another important aspect is construction material, whether it is a building or a irrigation project or an hydro project. Construction material is very important. So the, what they rely on geologists. They ask you what is the requirement of material? Well, what is the type of dam? It's a rock fill dam. Then you require rock uh, rock fill material. If it is a concrete dam, you need aggregates. So where from where you will bring it? So you have to do a field investigation. You have to adopt uh, excavation methodology. You have to have a preferred location because every location nowadays either they fall in a reserve forest area or in the river. There are a lot of uh, environmental problem is there, local problem is there. Now we know uh, we are facing sand problem for a small uh, house construction. So then there is a sampling, testing, reporting and all these things. Then a uh, detailed quarry map is prepared. I'm going very fast. Then this is uh, uh, during uh, construction, construction stage, we have to do logging, mapping, uh, rock mass classification you have to do, and then based on these uh, data, we have to go for a support, what type of support we have to do. This is a daily basis, daily work of a geologist to do all these things. Then uh, you have to study and advise for groundwater. There is maybe a groundwater flow, which I'll show you one of the photographs. I'm going fast. Uh, then a um, the, uh, post construction, you have to go for a dam safety, whether the dam is safe, then we have to go for a reservoir competency that I already discussed, the erosion and the abutment stability, that seismic activity, if any, in one of the project, um, the big project, we uh, installed uh, micro earthquake stations, only to, uh, about six stations in 25 kilometer radius, only to record any seismic activity as low as even uh, 2.5 uh, scale. So then uh, periodic inspection of dams, tunnels, bridge, apartments, river erosion, so these are for large engineering projects. These are all the geologist has to do. I'm showing a small model. This is, a, I could have shown a photograph of a, a big project, but uh, I thought uh, this one is my favorite, uh, uh, this model. I uh, we got it done to be a model maker. This is about a, a model of an hydroelectric project. You see, there is a reservoir, there is a dam, and this is the diversion tunnel. Before, uh, for the foundation, we have to divert. This is a, one of the branch of, uh, um, uh, this thing, uh, Brahmaputra River. So here, this is the diversion tunnel. Then you have the power tunnels here. Then a power house is uh, constructed here. Then surging chamber is here. This is the dam. So uh, um, uh, you, you can visualize, see these are the intakes uh, for the tunnels. Uh, these are the intakes of the tunnels. So that is how it is. Then uh, this is the, uh, uh, the uh, this is the, this photograph I am showing. So a selection of a proper uh, site. So if, uh, if you have to have a project, uh, see, you see there's a rock is available here. Then here, this side, you are having overburden. From here, again, there is a overburden. River is flowing this way. Then you can have a, a, a dam here or here or here or five, five kilometer away from here. Or So all these things have to be studied. I, I, I told you with a combination of studies with aerial dust study and then site study, and then doing some investigations because we have to have a project where it is feasible and the rock is available for your foundation. If rock is not available, you should have a rock fill material or um, without rock also, we can have a project. Then you have to type of dam you have to uh, finalize. So for that type of dam, you have to have the material, what type of dam you are doing. So uh, here, uh, we can, uh, to know the bedrock, we do some boreholes and line drilling is done from here to here. Then some, from here to here also, we can do some line drilling. And then uh, you can have uh, some geophysical profiles. We can lay on these uh, banks and then find out what is the depth of rock. And then whether we can have, a, uh, I mean, the excavation of that overburden. See, this, this is the overburden. Here rock is there. The, here you can abut to the dam. But here, the foundation, you should have a, 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 a safe depth, not very, very deep. Because if it is more deep, then more excavation, uh, more uh, cost. So all these things are decided based on site. Um, then this is one of the drilling machine in the river. And then you see you have in, in somewhere, um, Mr. Prabhagran showed uh, in a river barge a hole. Here I am showing an inclined hole. Sometimes you cannot go inside I mean, near the river. If this is a very um, ferocious river, then we go for an inclined uh, drilling um, and then infer the data. See, this is a 
road tunnel will be made because just uh, i show you uh, it's a portal it's an inlet site how they safely they have done and then doing drilling for putting rock bolts and then you can see uh, wire mesh is there and then this whole surface is short treated so that people uh, walking are doing then there is no loose fall so this uh, protection I mean geologist has to keep it in mind and they have to advise how it should be done then inside the tunnel the rib erection is going on um, as i said a lot of slabs are falling so this area needs to be protected so they are going for a, a rib erection so so nowadays um, we are going for a, Uh, TBM tunnel boring machine. In the metro projects are done through uh, tunnel boring machines. You have a cutter head here, and then you have a, see here in normal drilling and blasting technology. Um, uh, in this uh, one, you have to have a separate. Uh, every time uh, one team will go, they will do the drilling. The other team will go, they will uh, put the blasting material, the blast it. Then uh, the third team will go. and then uh, they, they should be with them the time they will go for uh, the scaling and then the, then mucking has to be done separately so this is the drilling and blasting methodology adopted normally in a tunnel but nowadays this uh, tbm tunnel boring machine it, this contains everything it has got a conveyor belt with the, the, the cutter head will go ahead and then the and the muck will be flown through Uh, the conveyor belt, and then you will have uh, support uh, the short treating uh, immediately. It will do the short treating, and so everything is over. But whether this uh, TBM can be adopted for all the projects? No, it is not. Uh, uh, the, you cannot say that way because in one of the project we are stuck up with the TBM, and then the TBM has to be abandoned because it cannot go back. It can go only for, for forward. It cannot be brought back. So we have to, uh, you know. With the TBM stuck with a sand deposit inside, and then uh, it was a valley channel. Then ultimately, the, that was stuck up, and then pre-routing was done for the tunnel. So this is this is a disadvantage also. So we we have to a geologist has to uh, advise whether we can go for a tunnel bore emission or you got to go for a, a NATM method or a new Austrian tunneling technology. All these things have to be decided. See, there are a lot of challenges. so the challenges are for the development of any project um, it could be a regulatory a regulatory problem uh, is also one of the challenge it is a, we should not uh, uh, say that, that way because regulatory is for the um, human uh, the, this thing only it has got a human concern that's why there are a lot of regulatory uh, this thing then it's societal societal problem is uh, nowadays it's cropping up we, we know kudangulam or it is um, uh, any other uh, this is societal problems that logistic due to remoteness here i want to uh, see the, uh, the projects nowadays uh, the new projects are coming they are in remote areas so the logistic is very difficult the getting right talent for remote localities here i would like to tell now our young geologist the projects cannot be made in your backyard the projects will be in a very remote area there will be no basic facilities which where i have lived 6 years 7 years there were no base even electricity was not there the telephone connectivity was not there so i lived there with uh, for more than 6 years uh, mr prabhakaran also was my colleague there so so what we have to do we have to take the national um, development we have to take it as a challenge and then we should go um, uh, work for the nation building i uh, we should go because uh, we are uh, used to nowadays people are going for a uh, ac room and then sitting in front of a desktop and then work so it is not like that making a project is not like that we have to um, yes. see that uh, dr abdul kalam's uh, vision uh, come true uh, for that we have to work for the nation building and this is my advice to all the uh, young engineers talented engineers go for uh, uh, such a pro uh, don't say no to Uh, go and work for uh, remote uh, areas uh, they, of course initially there is a problem which i have also faced everybody will face it we want a very comfortable um, this thing but still we will uh, work then the commercial aspects uh, commercial aspects uh, i'm not going very detailed then um, uh, because the, the project is to be viable that is the main, main commercial aspect that is a challenge again the technical challenges it can be engineering challenge or it may be geological or hydrological or environmental so these are all the challenges then you see 
this is uh, one of the challenge which i want to show there is a huge rockfall it is uh, more than uh, 250 meter if you get such a thing in our project area it is a big problem is uh, economically you will be in soup and then you see the road connectivity there is a slide this is a road to badrinath uh, this photograph was taken by me uh, when we were approaching and then uh, suddenly the slide took place and then we had to return back so like that the days are wasted the time is wasted money is wasted um, uh, with this are all natural uh, uh, this thing and this is the um, uh, loose uh, material if this keep on moving in the himalayas this is a normal site um, most of our uh, geologists uh, seniors uh, um, uh, they have uh, worked in such uh, areas and then inside tunnels see you have a groundwater problem there is a seepage here there is a seepage here there is a continuous what what a geologist has to do whether it is a, 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 a landslide area what the geologist has to do is he has to do the mapping the extent of the slide the crown and then the toe and then what is the uh, material involved in this uh, slide so this much data if a geologist is able to produce that will give a, a solution the solution can be devised uh, it could be a, a contour uh, mean groundwater uh, drainage problem or a, a toe wall uh, problem how to found out so these are basically the geology here also the uh, you have to know how much quantity of water is coming whether the groundwater coming is uh, for, uh, it has got a perennial source or it is only a perched groundwater flows for two three days and then it subsides so all these things need to be studied uh, by a geologist and then advise the civil engineer project engineers so there is a collapse inside the tunnel and the geologist has to see what is the type of material it is coming from where it is coming how so these are the studies we have to make there is a irrigation channel is going on you can see a cavity formation see actually this is a road you can see a man is standing here and then this is the slab and below which uh, there a cavity is formed here and uh, the, the slope also collapsed so this is post construction problem so th then i found that it is an uh, i went to the site and found that it's a limestone country and there is a cavernous uh, uh, could be one of the reasons see this is a just a challenge this is a big river like brahmaputra at this at this place it is called as logit river you can know you can see the, this river has to be tamed a dam has to be constructed here you can see what is the challenge we have as an engineers or as a geologist for the national building see these are the uh, near badrinath you can see um, um, avalanche i mean avalanche the, the glaciers coming and blocking the river if it if it is near your dam site then it's gone so like that i'll show you a small uh, um, animated clip um, the, the uh, sorry uh, animation oh sorry it is not uh, working Yeah, uh, you are able to. You will be able to see this uh, um, animation. It's an I have taken it from YouTube only. Um, it's about a uh, glow, glacial lake uh, outburst. <laughs> So here you see, hello. You share the video, sir. You share the video. Yeah, yeah, I'll share the video. I just I want to explain. See, this is the this is a river, uh, say Himalayas, or it could be anywhere in the world. This sir, is video. A... Video is not seen here. Video is not seen here. Oh, it is not seen, eh? Yes, sir. Yes. You just uh, click on the video and you scroll that. You minimize the PowerPoint now, and you can see the video. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now you are able to see. No sir. Again, I have to do share, share screen. No, no, no. You already okay. scan is uh, share. Your screen is shared. You just minimize the uh, PowerPoint. 
Okay. So that okay. the back side it will be seen, I think. It is seen now. No, not sir. No, it's not seen. Maybe your uh, 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 network connection doesn't uh, permit to see so the videos. Okay. 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 Use file. File. Uh, file. It is not shown. Not, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's not seen so far. Okay. And uh, you can you can give the link in the say. Uh, okay. 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 Slides. Okay. So no. It is not showing anyway. You can start for the next uh, next slide, sir. From next slide. Yeah, I'll go to the next slide. So these are uh, these are the uh, problems. Uh, I told you. I just wanted to show how we are like. Uh, Godam, sir. Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah. Yes. Principal, principal is in the online. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, good okay. morning, sir. Ah, sir, hello. Good morning. Uh, Yes, sir, please continue. Sir. Uh, so now uh, you can see an uh, geologist crossing the river. Uh, how he will be crossing? Just I want to show uh, to, to tell you that uh, these are the challenges which we are having. We have to uh, the, the so students should take care of this. Some audio disturbance is there. So, sir, because from your YouTube channel, sir. You uh, once you uh, open that uh, animation, no? Yeah. Uh, that is disturbing. You just mini uh, close that. You minimize that. Yeah, minimize that. Uh... No, 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 not this, sir. No, no, not this. You, you close the YouTube, which is playing now. Kanan, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, noise is stopped. You can continue now. Another two, three minutes because principal is waiting. Okay. okay. Sir, over. Sir. Yes, sir. My, my, uh, this thing is over. Uh, I have completed. You just complete formally, just to say. Yeah. See, I am. So I was I talked about uh, um, the various aspects of engineering geology, uh, right from the initial stage of conception to commissioning and then post construction commissioning. And uh, I just wanted to tell uh, the, our young geologists that it is a challenging job. And we should go and work in remote areas, and we have to take uh, the work for the nation building. That is uh, that is my uh, my thing. And I thank uh, all of you for your patient hearing. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Kanan, sir. Thank you for our attention. Uh, sorry, sir. Thank you for your presentation. I'm sorry. Uh, I request our principal. Principal to switch on the video and audio. Sir, good morning, sir. Sir, principal, sir. Our unmute panel. Our mute layer comes, sir. Is the mute? Ask him to unmute video and audio, sir. So good morning. So, you guys, the video and audio are on. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, one second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Dear participants, principal will be joining now. If you have questions, we can ask questions after the principal's uh, talk, and we can also discuss after that. Yes, sir. We can have a question answer session also now. No, no, principal is going to join, sir. So after this talk, we can continue, sir. Okay, okay. No, I have gone through very fast because certain things I have, I could not. Uh, But uh, all are visualized. You no, know, we can see the pictures. That is very, it is directly taken to your mind. <laughs> sir, principal, sir. Good morning, sir. Principal sir, good morning. Yeah. 
சரி இப்போ ஒரு லைன்ல இல்ல சார் யா ஃபோன் பண்ணி பாருங்க ஃபோன் பண்றேன் சார் ஃபோன் பண்றேன் Sir, meanwhile, you can ask some one or two questions to the participant, somebody. Sir, meanwhile, you can, uh, somebody can ask questions to the resource person. Uh, uh, Kanan, sir, this is yes, Kumaro Guru. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Ah, okay. Now, they are making tunnel for a long, very long uh, uh, distance, like two kilometers, five kilometers, like that. Yes, sir. How do they make alignment? Are they... Do, do the GPS or kind of a theodolite that uh, surveys? Not, How do they make not. that correct, perfect alignment to that uh, one point to another point? Sir, the yes, sir. Yes, sir, sir, basically it is a topographical survey. Uh, this uh, requirement. Basically. No, no. I am talking about within the tunnel. So I am saying our metro tunnel is there, even our Jawahar tunnel is there. And yes, sir. Then, um, Uh, UK to it is connecting that uh, tunnel is connecting uh, between uh, uh, France and England, uh, the yes, undersea sir. tunnel. So how do they uh, make the proper I mean correct alignment? Yes, sir, that this a total station. Total station only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Total station. It's so accurate. Wow, oh, it's very accurate. Nowadays, it's more improvised uh, models have come. So yeah. is that uh, do they use that GPS system also in that? So the GPS, uh, see wherever the satellite signals are uh, not there, then it is very difficult. So it's very uh, difficult. GPS very difficult. will not work, sir. That is, Total uh, sessions, I know, but uh, I just wanted to know whether uh, it is so, uh, I mean, accurate. Uh, so it gives. No, GPS that, is not accurate, sir. We have uh, tried. I uh, read that uh, when that in that English channel when that uh, this was connected from okay. uh, England sign this thing, hardly there was some uh, less than a meter or some a few centimeters only that okay. connection point. I mean, mm-hmm. such so was uh, such was the accuracy. Okay, okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, that is a total station, sir. Yes. That is Thank a you, lot of model. Uh, the Leica is there. I mean, so many companies are coming out with uh, novel uh, this thing. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, Kumar Guru, sir. Yeah. Shall I shall I uh, add to it what you are telling uh, in the tunneling uh, tunnel survey underground survey? Yeah. Uh, the accuracy is. Less when up to five five centimeters, you can say oh, even less than five centimeter. Uh, if you start from A, if you yeah. end up at B, uh, uh, it is even less than five centimeter. Okay. I am okay. talking the maximum. 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 I am talking. Such a fantastic and wonderful technology we have got, and oh, also nice. uh, the person behind the machine is so important. Exactly. And the, and our uh, surveyors are. Uh, Really wonderful, and uh, uh, they have thirty-five uh, years of service. Thirty to thirty-five nice. years of service. Thank you, yes. thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, there is some more question you can ask. The uh, principal is uh, shortly will be joining. Is there any uh, question from uh, the audience participants? Uh, Mr. Kanan. Yes, sir. I am Dr. Singer. Yes. 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 Welcome, sir. Early from Water Board. Okay. and your presentation is very well taken yes sir. it is really good very informative yes sir. and my first question is yes, many sir. of us uh, do misunderstand between the geo investigations or geo technical investigations and soil studies okay. are they same or not <laughs> sir basically we are dealing with soil or rock these are the two things whether it is a building or a, a any engineering structure so it is same see there is i don't find any difference uh, whether it is soil mechanics or rock mechanics you have to deal with both no why i am asking this question is because uh-huh. i have some friends from structural engineering okay they talk about only soil they don't talk about rock yeah because um, they, uh, they 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 the, the their exposure Uh, wherever they are uh, construction or doing or uh, they, they may be dealing with so uh, uh, where you have to deal with the rock then you have to talk about rock only you cannot talk no, about no you are talking about the yeah, multi storey right. buildings yeah especially chennai yeah. yeah. is basically an alluvial terrain yes and then we talk about the alluvial terrain and the multi storey buildings yes, only sir. the soil will come into the picture yes, because sir. of the foundation yes, or sir. the foundation engineering and yes, not the 
geotechnical investigation am i right or wrong uh it should be geotechnical you are geotechnical it should be geotechnical everything is geotechnical only everything is geotechnical uh, only two aspects it is a part it's a part uh, mr see there yeah mr see there tell i answer yeah, your question tell i answer yeah, your question yeah mr sakar go ahead uh, uh, what is uh, geological mapping geological mapping is uh, dig site attitudes uh, the rock formations and uh, the structures isn't it okay hello see there yeah yeah uh, yeah what what so is, we are there what, what, what is uh, geotechnical sir sir line vandiruchu sir ninga what is geotechnical map bodum sir o r t abdi vandiruchu sir geotechnical map is sir vanaka sir okay, okay. I'll, i'll stop you sir line la vandutingla sir vandutanga sir okay sir ninga video on pannidunga sir na ellarum sir sir video la da sir kar sir is visual sir audio da sir la sir audio um potta Okay, sir. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning sir. sir. Yeah, very good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning sir. Want to cut panel? Dear participants, dear uh, resource persons, and uh, our uh, department staff, the organizing secretary, Mr. Charles, and everybody, and behalf of our department, students, staff members. and the organizing committee i welcome dr o r devanathan sir who is a principal of the prestigious presidency college chennai and i to this webinar uh, valediction function in front of principal i'll take 2 uh, 3 uh, minutes to report the report uh, read out the report of the webinar and i request after that the principal give, should give, so, uh, say a few thing a uh, few words about the webinar Shall I take? Uh, shall I talk? Uh, read out the re uh, report, sir. Hi, ah, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning to one and all present here. On behalf of the students and alumni members, staff members of Department of Geology, I want to all heartily thank our principal, Dr. O R Devanathan, for his support and encouragement to conduct a five days webinar series on geological sciences. As convener, I express my sincere gratitude to all the resource persons who have made this webinar a great success. by their vast vast field of knowledge the very objective of organizing this webinar during the covid-19 lockdown is to expose the students on the various branches of earth sciences and their job opportunities sir there was around 440 participants all over the country content of faculty members senior faculty members senior geologists from gls gls survey of india and so many agencies post doctor fellows research scholars pg students ug students and uh, there are some participants from abroad also nigeria australia and usa uh, there are total of number of nine lectures has been delivered by extreme sci scientists who have held key position in government of india for more than 35 years all the resource persons are uh, served in government of india in highest positions and they have served more than 35 years sir. that is what the unique point is and nobody is a, is from teaching background they are a field person uh, the details of lectures uh, i'll just give a, a glimpse of it the lecture 1 uh, and uh, first day started with uh, the dr np nadan's lecture uh, on geological and technical evaluation of tamil nadu he is a deputy director sir, general in the geology la irukken or 10 minutes la vandren He is a he is a deputy director general retired from Geological Survey of India, Government of Mines, Government of uh, Ministry of Mines, Government of India. He took a complete geological tour of the southern India through his presentation and exposed Hello. the types of rocks, rock formation in in this part, especially to young young budding geologists. His lecture yeah, highlighted yeah, many yeah. unknown aspects yeah. in a comprehensive manner. Yes, yes. The next lecture was given by Dr. R. Srinivasan. Again, a deputy director general retired from Ge Geological Survey of India, Government of India. His, his topic is on societal values of geomorphological studies. Dr. Srinivasan sketched out various geomorphological formation of Tamil Nadu and its changes over the time. He also triggered the younger minds to, of participants to pr pursue research with social benefits. Lecture three was on uh, by given by Dr. A. V. Jayagopal, Addition Director, Retired Atomic Mineral Directorate, Department of Atomic Energy, Government of India. Gave a talk on atomic minerals. exploration in our natural building 
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಯಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಟಾಮಿಕ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಈ ಜಸ್ಟಿಫೈ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಸೂಟಬಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೋಟೋಗ್ರಾಫ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಟರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಅಟಾಮಿಕ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿತ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮ್ ರೇಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಟಾಮಿಕ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಈ ಜಸ್ಟಿಫೈ ದ ಥಾಕ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಬಿ ಪ್ರಭಾಕರನ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಚೀಫ್ ಜಿಯ ಚೀಫ್ ಇನ್ ಜಿಯಾಲಜಿ ರಿಟೈರ್ಡ್ from geo technical and engineering division of national hydroelectric power corporation government of india and he spoke on geo technical investigation of hydroelectric projects planning and execution sri prabhakaran's talk started with basic of engineering geology and traveled to various applications which he applied in the field in the construction of major hydroelectric projects he also explained, explained methods of drilling through a video which brought the uh, field to our laptops day uh, day 3 it started with a lecture of sri p kumaraguru director retired geological survey of india government of india delivered a lecture on fossil fuels and energy scenario of india sri kumaraguru sir clearly explored various coal bearing formation and their distribution in india i so sir kumaraguru sir himself showed uh, the uh, showed uh, the coal reserves huge coal reserves he identified he discovered during his tenure in the service he also exposed various coal reserves of india and huge financial resources from the coal to our country to this presentation next, next lecture was given by sri b kanishkan who was a director retired from geological survey of india government of india on the topic of geological and commercial aspects of granite sri kanishkan sir clearly brought out various granites with their geological and commercial aspects he also emphasized the role of geologists in mapping and self safe exploration of various granites which generates huge financial resources to the country next day day 4 was started with dr k ayasami's lecture on micropalantology is a good career choice dr ayasami was a deputy director general retired from government of india geological survey of india delivered the dr ayasami presentation started with introduction of various microfossils and their applications he stressed how the subject of paleontology paleontology should be treated and it should be maintained with all geological branches Dr. Ayasami uh, PPT is an eye opener for young geologists as, as well as a retired geoscientist. Uh, the le- lecture for, uh, 8 was given by Dr. B. Umabadi, a senior hydrogeologist, scientist D, retired from Central Groundwater Board, Government of India, under Minister of Water Resources. He delivered a lecture on managed aquifer research. Dr. Umabadi talk started with basic of hydrogeology and various methods of recharge used in the different geological setup. He also stressed use of success of his own research carried out in the virudhunagar district which was properly called as blue evolution and the today's the last lecture lecture number 9 was given by sri kannan who is chief geology retired from geotechnical and engineering division national hydroelectric power corporation the government of india enterprises he spoke on engineering geological studies for large civil engineering projects sri kannan talk started with basic of engineering geology and traveled to various application he applied in the field of construction and of, of major civil engineering projects he clearly explained the job profile of an engineer ge- geologist in a complicated terrain the topics are s- such the students are can decide their career and the fall, f- field of job openings the students can also decide on research areas which are which are shown so many thrust areas in the presentations that are to be carried out through this lecture sir so finally i extend our sincere thanks to all our department staff who also part of our aggregation committee and the principal in particular the resource person also thank you one and all sir now you are request our principal to give say a few words about the webinar sir. very good afternoon one and all i am really very happy that not that many resource persons who have given lot of lectures here are very well present here i could see dr shri kannan av jayagopal sir kumara guru our own kumara guru who is doing uh, research in our own uh, college and uh, dr shri prabhakaran so i am very happy that generally in other uh, seminars once our lecture is over we move away and we do not care to listen to other speakers but in this case in this uh, webinar that those who have given lectures i have chosen to remain here and be participants till the end really makes this webinar a grand success i feel that should be the uh, the success i i feel personally 
and i congratulate dr gautam and his team for organize when webinars are the fashion modern day fashion especially post covid scenario he has conducted a week long webinar wherein nine very useful lectures have been listened to by our students for the benefit of our students it has been it has been arranged and i am really happy and i congratulate dr gautam and his uh, team and especially organizing secretary shri charles dhana now i want to say a few words about our college this is one of the grandest and the oldest institutions of india you all might be doing that it has produced more than 2 3 nobel laureates and an able laureate these are all laurels and this is the place where tamil tata buvesa worked and there are lot of sanskrit scholars on whom various institutions have been established they have also been part of this prestigious presidency college when we say prestigious presidency college it is just not for rhyme alliteration etc it is really prestigious one has to have the feel if he enters the portals of that college now you may be thinking that we are standing on the past laurels but i would like you all to know that in arts and science category of 19 uh, 1819 our college stood at Uh, third position and uh, now it is at fifth position ranked fifth at the all india level and the first four positions have been carried by the arts and science colleges of delhi now which means this is the best arts and science college that the state or south india has now produced now what i want to stress is in such a great grand college the students of geology who are studying here should really feel blessed because they are studying in a department which is as old as the college itself now this department of geology was the first to be such a department in the whole of south asia and it really it, it really is a great pride for us but it has successfully produced lot of able minds who do grand researches with regard to geology and come out with grander results really makes us feel proud i hope that this webinar wherein nine very precious matters have been discussed should have been a great help for our students it is just not for widening their knowledge on geology i understand from the report of dr gautam that it is also an eye opener for the students to choose their career in geology so i really congratulate dr gautam and his team of geol i mean geology professors in our college dr charles dana for organizing this and all those resource persons who have given this uh, who have given their lectures their, their peace of mind to this uh, brilliant uh, set of students here and really i congratulate and thank all those who have cho who have chosen to remain till the end uh, uh, at least on this valediction day so i thank all the resource persons congratulate the team of geology professors for i mean or, uh, organizing and arranging this webinar and all those participants i really know that you have been immensely benefited i thank you all thank you for the opportunity dr gautam and i i really thank from the bottom most part of my heart for all those resource persons thank you thank you all thank i you. hope you, that this is a grand success Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You. In your busy schedule, you are now waiting for another webinar to start. Thank you so much for joining us and wishing us uh, uh, this webinar uh, to be a success one. Thank you so much. And let us um, 
sir uh, shall i start with the questions sir yes, there sir. are some well, questions yeah yeah you can but i would i yes, would sir. personally would like to grant me permission to leave the meeting because i have to go for botany meeting thank you all thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you thank you sir. thank you thank you for our respected principal and uh, i request uh, 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 participants to uh, shoot the questions to the resource person there's a few questions because we already we are late one or two questions we can ask sir, to the resource gautam person. yes sir gautam sir yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, i have got an uh, kannan sir kannan sir hello kannan sir Ah, welcome, sir. Yeah, that's uh, wonderful, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Sorry. you. Actually, uh, you are uh, talking of. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Actually, short. Uh, there was a time uh, fixed. Was eleven uh, o'clock. I had to complete, so I had to yeah. uh, rush, through, <laughs> rush through literally. No, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sir. Kanan, sir. The principal told me that he is having another meeting, so. Uh, I I requested you. That's why morning I requested you. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate it. It was it was a must. I I can. Anyway, you have covered the the most aspect yeah. of it. Yeah, everything Only you have covered. Yeah. If you have yeah. shown yeah. that video also, it would have been a very nice thing. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, it was an animation. Send the link. We will see that video. That's all. <laughs> it will be never will be hundred percent. It will be always be ninety nine percent. Anyway, it was a very yeah. wonderful lecture and yeah, uh, really yeah, useful yeah, to. Yeah. everyone hello sir yeah kannan sir uh, yes sir uh, yeah see uh, you after your uh, uh, construction everything is over yes, you are talking about the after uh, position also see we have been uh, we know that uh, you are uh, radio isotopes yes sir radio isotopes are used to yes, locate sir. the Faults or where the leakage and all. Yes, so, sir. do we use anywhere or what's your opinion about it? How how successful it is, sir? Actually, we have not used it, but technically, yes. Of course, we have discussed in many meetings and other things. Especially, the radio isotopes are uh, very very useful in uh, finding out the source of groundwater in underground works. So, from where uh, the water is coming? See, in a tunnel. Uh, the himalayas the biggest problem is groundwater so the radio isotopes will guide you from where where is the water source no, so what uh, we have we were only discussing we have not used it anyway. no, no that is about the groundwater even yes, the leakages where the weak zones are there can also be located with the use of radio isotopes uh, i mean i have no knowledge on that <laughs> so okay thank you Hello, sir. Uh, I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, how do you deal with the hydrostatic pressure that builds up in the dams? Usually, that could cause seismic tremors later. Right? Adityan, Adityan. Yes, you sir. You can switch on your radio, video also, video. No problem. Show your face. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, one second. Hello, sir. Uh, am I visible now? Yeah, yeah, clear. Yeah, uh, sir. So I was wondering, how do we deal with this hydrostatic pressure that builds up in the dam? I mean, post construction, usually the faults that are uh, below the dam, they sometimes gets uh, get activated, and there are small tremors around uh, the dam. So how how do we usually deal with this, sir? Uh, Kanan, sir. Uh, actually, uh, the this is called as RIS. That is reservoir induced seismicity. so even uh, the large water body i mean water is impounded then then the waves are created in because of these waves uh, this uh, earthquake uh, is triggered like that uh, koina dam is uh, uh, every time talked about uh, the earthquakes uh, near koina, koina dam that is because of uh, ris but i tell you it is uh, um, um, debatable uh, issue it is a debatable issue still nobody uh, has got a very uh, um, uh, data data to support whether the ris is really exist or not we, we don't know but it could be but uh, what is the uh, the scale of uh, that such activity 
if if a seismic activity is there, what will be the scale of such activity? A natural uh, earthquake, how much energy it can produce, and then a reservoir induced seismicity because of that, how much energy will be produced? What ultimately what we are important is whether our dam uh, structure is safe or not. If a particular scale of intensity of earthquake comes, what the dam I have designed, whether it is uh, it can withstand that uh, much of uh, earthquake. So we have a, a seismic zoning map of India, and then based on that, we interpret that this much scale in a, this particular area uh, earthquake can come. Then accordingly, right, design parameter input has been taken, and then the, the the project is designed to withstand to that extent of uh, earthquake. But if it goes beyond that, what will happen? Yes, nobody has any answer. There could be a crack in the dam. There could be a collapse in the dam that we don't know. But at least, at least, with the present knowledge, whatever we can do in the design of the dam, the location of the dam. See, for example, Theri Dam. Theri Dam in Himalayas. It is located in zone five, highest. I mean, earthquake to the extent of eight, eight point five can occur there. That is very a disastrous, catastrophic earthquake it will be. So now they have not constructed a concrete uh, gravity dam. There they have constructed a rockfield dam. So rockfield dam is more flexible than a. So accordingly you have to decide. But when your question is about RIS regarding RIS, I tell you, I don't know how much uh, energy it can produce, how much uh, earthquake it can trigger in that particular area. It requires a lot of data, a lot of studies, and then we, we don't have many examples to prove whether this is right or that is right. That is a real uh, situation. Thank you, sir. So that uh, I request the so participants to ask questions because uh, the people uh, resource persons are. Uh, sir, um, yeah. Kadam sir, I take some questions from the YouTube on uh, chatting, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh. Sir, there uh, there is a question. Hello, Kanan sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Sir, is there any geo any geotechnical structure for R versus C energy waves and tides? Sir, yeah, definitely. In Kutch Basin, they have done some preliminary studies. There are see during a day, there is a high tide and low tide. High tide and low tide is so. Some structures can be built along the shores. In but it can I. Every shoreline will not give you uh, uh, the, this uh, energy, but uh, there are uh, there is, at Kutch they have done some studies, but uh, nothing has been um, concrete now so, so far. Okay. But in uh, France and all they have made tidal energy uh, they are uh, extracting that is there, but in India it is not. Okay. But there are scope, there are scope. Okay, sir. Next question. What are the precautions to be taken care while constructing dam on sedimentary rocks as basements and the reasons for failure? Ah, yes, sir. Sedimentary rock. Uh, only uh, thing is, uh, we have to do the investigation and find out uh, whether there are any fissures or whether there are any shear zones, where are, there are there are crush zones, uh, soft nature of the rock like that. Then what we do is the precaution is. We do uh, inject uh, grouting. We do uh, consolidation grouting of that material. So when any, anything is cement is injected, and now it goes and fills in all the uh, areas, and then it uh, takes care of it. That is the that is the thing. With, uh, mainly grouting is done a uh, proper curtain grouting, and then uh, consolidation grouting is done in the dam site. Whether it is sedimentary rock or it is an hard rock, it's no matter. So long it can um, um, uh, my footing is uh, safe. Okay. So the that is how it is uh, managed. Okay, so one big question I'll read out, sir. Uh, one big question. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll just read out. If we are about to construct a tunnel in yes, a fold sir. and a soft rock is repeating. Yes, sir. What is what is advisable, sir? Same question. Is there any engineering construction to support the tunnel or not to construct the tunnel and find an alternative? This is a question. I'll read out again. I'll yes, read sir. out again. Yes, sir. Uh, if we are about to construct a tunnel in a fold or a soft rock, 
is repeating what is ad, what is our advice ad, advisable sir what is your advice ah yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah, it, it is a folded uh, strata folded strata where you have got a repeated uh, soft rock so the dealing a soft rock is um, a little difficult in a tunnel but uh, you have to see what is the um, thickness of that soft rock if the thickness of uh, soft rock is going to be only 2 meter uh, 3 meter you can still manage if, even if it repeats we can always manage it but if it is going to be 10 meter 15 meter 20 meter you are going to have only a soft material and then it will continuously collapse and then your um, uh, production time will be lost you will be lot of uh, seeing lot of uh, time and money is wasted on that okay. uh, soft rock so the better to have a better location the in advance if you know it it is i, I will always prefer a better alignment than a, a going for a, a 20 meter 30 meter in a soft material where where i can have a better but it is not always possible you okay. cannot have you cannot have a, a, a metro tunnel you are making or you are making a railway tunnel you have to you the two end points you know it so you will always try to connect it to a short route you cannot have a deroute i mean uh, you cannot make a circular route just because your geology yeah, does not permit it is not possible nobody will agree it you yes. have to the geology you have to support it if it is a short route see this is the only alternative available uh, a cost effective solution then you have to evolve a methodology for treating that short route that is how we have to approach it see everything uh, every site is a unique every project is a unique and every solution should be unique and it will be just because your previous knowledge you cannot apply in another project because every site condition varies okay that's how it is uh, sanchari banerjee you can ask question by uh, one, showing sir, one, your audio and video sir one more question from uh, youtube sir yes sir yes. i have i have seen it and uh, now banerjee can ask question okay, okay. banerjee banerjee yes sir yes sir ah, you switch on your audio right yeah Uh, good morning sir uh, sir i would just uh, like to ask you that uh, uh, we saw a slide in which the water seepage was there on left and right side uh, yes. after the construction of the dam sir i just wanted to know that is there any way of uh, preventing that after the construction means uh, how can it be stopped or Uh, to carry on the work there how can it be stopped yeah 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 i come to that i'll come to i understood your question yes sir. it was basically a tunnel okay yes sir it was a tunnel where there is a seepage the tunnel uh, inside the tunnel water will be there even the seepage will be there yes Here, sir because on the right side and the left side you are, I, i only shown two locations from yes. where this thing so now first of all to identify the location of seepage it is very difficult when one tunnel is filled you will not know from where water is coming it may be dripping from the top it may be coming from the bottom or it may be coming from the walls so there are different sources of water see yeah, that's what i told you at that time if it is an aperched water if it is an aperched water immediately after you open you puncture it then it will flow continuously with a particular uh, speed it will uh, flow for few days say 2 days 3 days 4 days depending upon if there is a the capacity the reservoir inside the water but if it it has got a permanent uh, uh, source it so, is a, a, a huge hydraulic head behind uh, this uh, tunnel see the solution is first of all how we treat if there is a ground water because we have experienced in many projects how we treat so now first of all you you should have a drainage inside the tunnel what is the quantity of water a geologist has to uh, see how much uh, water is flowing in the um, uh, uh, flowing from the seepage and then for that a proper drainage has to be made and uh, the tunnel gradient uh, sometimes it will not help you so you have to have a small uh, sump inside the tunnel and then from there you have to pump out because it may be a grading in uh, tunnel or it may be grading up tunnel depending upon the gravity you have to use the water pump or you do a gravity drainage that is one thing is first thing is you drainage second thing is the drainage is not possible because there is a huge there is a uh, flushing of uh, the water. water is coming and with a lot of muck and material and other things you you will be stuck up and one month two month your work is wasted so much of water is ground you are not able to so now we have to find out the source 
the geologist has to survey the complete area you go, he will walk around the area he will find out the source from where it is coming then there are some discharge wells can be made and then that water from outside the tunnel it can be pumped out so these are the some of the techniques you have to apply and then you do the grouting continuous grouting of the bottom of the ceiling and uh, the walls you do continuous grouting and then stop uh, seal the um, um, fissures and uh, from where the water is coming so that's how it is dealt and every time it has to be um, uh, so the solution has to be uh, adopt, uh, adopted thank you sir i am dr see there hello yes sir please continue sir voice is clear sir you can ask see there sir you can switch on your audio video sridhar sir sir kannan sir yes sir yes sir another question yes sir i'll just read out the question uh, the best method to determine the spacing of discontinuity on digital 3d model of a rock slab what is the method used sir okay acha it is a uh, 3d uh, modeling 3d modeling 3d 3d modeling what we use uh, is a dips program dips program is there that uh, that can be uh, uh, version 5 i think i have used up to version 5 now nowadays i don't know maybe 5 6 years now i don't know what uh, version is is there latest version dips program uh, for uh, the statistical analysis stereography stereographic projection of the uh, joints attitudes uh, joints and then bedding or foliation so that you can do it and then for the tunnel inside ready there are various programs like unwedge so these are all uh, very useful this one is compatible to the other you do the analysis of this and then uh, take it to unwedge and then uh, design uh, your support system for the tunnels this are all this basically for tunnels yes back to sridhar yeah sir uh, hello yes sir i am again coming sir sure sir uh, i i am a retired hydrogeologist from pad board i am the dr sridhar Yes, so yes. Then after I retiring, I I had... sir, I think I, I have met you when I was in PW de Grand Water, sir, Chepak. Ah, uh, maybe, sir. I am not exactly sure. Yeah. But then I joined this uh, Metro Rail, sir, say Chennai Metro Rail for yes, geotechnical sir. investigations. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So I have been uh, taking up this investigations work for the past two and a half years. Okay, sir. My basic questions are: I mean, see, suppose we are doing seismic survey. Yes, sir. Whether it should be done in the orthogonal or linear array, so this is what the I mean. Certain doubts they used to ask me, and I used to clear them. But yes, what is this linear array and uh, orthogonal array? I told them to go for L shape, orthogonal yes, array. Yes, sir. Am I right or wrong, sir? Ah, uh, sir. Normally, what we we have done so far, what I have done is a linear array, sir. Okay. Because we do line drilling in a particular uh, this thing. Uh, and then uh, say for two three drill holes in one uh, linear uh, line and then we do the geophysical survey uh, and correlate the borehole data with the geophysical data and we are able to uh, see what is the lithology behind, below the uh, surface so this is how we are done orthogonal sir, yeah. done, but uh, sir one more thing is there if yeah. we required in orthogonal in other direction we always prefer to lay a another uh, profile it is always okay. another profile you um, uh, across to the one profile what we do is we take three profiles in one linear array and then across one or two arrays and to know there the complete you will get a fence uh, diagram type uh, subsurface uh, lithological uh, structure you will get it. that's how it is done uh, one more question sir is there any criteria fixed by nhpcl for van shear test But no sir we actually nhpc doesn't do any um, testing sir okay so normally the testings are done through laboratory like csmrs is there uh, cmri okay. dhanbad is there uh, there are uh, private agencies of their van shear test uh, that, that uh, rurki um, geotechnical uh, the, this thing that they are doing it rurki rurki university they are doing it uh, the uh, we we employ them sir and even drilling your outsourcing sir how it is drilling once upon a time when i joined nhpc we had our in house uh, uh, drilling team but okay. slowly we have withdrawn that activity then we outsource it no no Now, because i am talking about this 
saturated unsaturated soils spt values and all those things no sir this is all these things that done by outsourcer outsourcer outsource. thank you sir thank you very much yes thank uh, you sir sachin sachin go to go to give give yes, sir, yes, sir. i want to i yes, sir, chance sir. to students give yes, a chance to student please yes sir <laughs> No, no, I am. I am giving you the explanation for the CK. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am adding to that. Yes, sir. Because yes, sir. Uh, what, what this, uh, the question was the seepage problem in the hydroelectric projects. Uh, the the hydroelectric projects has three components: dam, tunnel, and power. Dam, we have got uh, uh, facilities and observational points, piezometers, and the observational grips in the dam body itself, where we. Daily, periodically, we inspect the dam uh, observational points in the drip, and we see the if there is any seepage, and we notice as well as in the uh, powerhouse area also, we have the uh, observation points. These observations will indicate the what is the uh, quantity of seepage, and uh, that for the tunnel, the seepage is in the outwards. So. Uh, we calculate according to the observations, and then we decide. Even as the seepage is more in the tunnel, we even shut down the uh, for, shut down the uh, project, and we drain out the entire uh, tunnel, and we inspect uh, each uh, centimeter of the tunnel, and we observe and identify the location. What is the uh, uh, purpose? What is the Where it, it it has got this leakage, and the treatment is the grouting, and also main main is grouting. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, yes, sir. We already time is eleven uh, fifty, uh, so we'll conclude this uh, session uh, because uh, either I'll I'll put the All the questions, for what far we are receiving to you, and you can answer it by email so that I can send send to the participant. So we are coming to the end of this webinar uh, with your session, beautiful session, and uh, on behalf of our uh, department, principal, students, I thank all the resource persons who actively participated and are actually who are there. Uh, in all the presentations i could see all the uh, resource persons were in all the presentations that is a good sign of uh, uh, sharing knowledge because from your point of view one specialization you can ask the questions to another specialization which is more beneficial to us so and as i request in the beginning of the presentation of your presentation you should support by giving lectures Uh, repeatedly so that uh, our students will be benefited and your knowledge should be transferred you will be you will be knowledge will be transferred to the young minds so that uh, uh, in this uh, critical stage of uh, we are facing a severe uh, pandemic stage students should not feel that they are out of college they should very much in touch with the subject i request all of the uh, all the resource persons to join uh, uh, kindly uh, accept our request and uh, Uh, give lectures to the students, and I, I would utterly thank all the resource persons for a valuable uh, presentation and time uh, you are given to us. And uh, I also request kindly to share the presentations to uh, organizing secretary so that it be shared to the participants also. Those who are not able to listen through because of some audio or video problem, they can read out the presentation and they can understand. And that is the idea. and uh, and uh, i i should appreciate uh, mr charles uh, charles because uh, he is the one who has made our idea to become as a live program uh, thank so you sir we have we have uh, have uh, so many ideas uh, we are having having uh, uh, so, so many thinking in our mind uh, but uh, it should be brought to it should be executed and it should be executed and it was neatly executed by charles and uh, I have. Uh, I I think all the resource person will three, accept this. Three cheers to Charles. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Or two two thumbs to Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Thank And you. a big hand also. Thank <laughs> you, <laughs> Charles. You are. This is not the end. We are going to start yeah, individual yeah, lectures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to go start individual lectures to our students. Yes, sir. Now we will focus on. 
in between we can also start a, a one day program for uh, like this uh, general participants also yes sir and uh, nadan sir nadan sir just nadan sir nadan sir i'll i'll, I'll just uh, make uh, say one sorry to you because he, nadan sir want to share something about the mineral exploration and his thing i i i have replied in that it will be given as a separate lecture some other day i am very oh, sorry sir because no, can, can you give me i one, don't know the one minute can yes, you sir, give yes, me sir. one minute yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir ah just yes uh, at the outset i want to thank dr gautam and mr charles for thank arranging you. this wonderful webinar because i have been attending simultaneously the salem webinar also the college but there it is only one lecture per day or alternate days are like that but here it is a continuous marathon session marathon. i arranged all five days with a full Thank attendance you. this is something that, that shows the success of this webinar organized Thank very nicely by dr gautam and uh, ably supported by our friend dr charles then thank you sir uh, uh, we, uh, right, the first day we gave the geology we were discussing structure and other things its applications i think now students will be appreciating when uh, dr kannan's lecture was delivered today so what is the relevance of the structure in any of your project especially the engineering projects in geology we can tell there is a shear zone there is a fault and you can get away with it but in engineering projects for everything counts because human lives are involved where people who are working in the tunnel are to be safe so all our interpretations and structural geological everything has to be done in a meticulous way so the implication of our geological observation in the field how it has got the relevance in the engineering geology or even in the diamond stone in any exploration for that matter that i think students must be now quite uh, appreciate the connection between these two these different uh, lectures that has been arranged here yes uh, we have there are different opportunities we are told mineral exploration is one of the opportunities where we have to augment our resources in that way we have just uh, a yeah, humble we have made a humble beginning a yeah, farm academy mineral exploration academy especially to uh is to disable screen sharing uh, yeah, dana sir yeah yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can just one slide only eh? yes yeah, sir you, you can just share. allow me to share yeah, yeah allow sir allow sir yeah you can share now now i will be just giving this particular slide only for the benefit of those who are interested in getting into the mineral exploration field so for them this you can just visit the site the mineral uh, mineral exploration academy.com here you will get all the course material a classroom lectures and then discussion videos the videos are recorded from the ex industry experts charles devnesh who is the mastermind in the gold exploration in the entire country then biblav chatopadhyay who is again the rio tintos gold the diamond man like with pg re all these experts lectures are now recorded and then put it in this academy video youtube you can visit this and then this is a free of cost for for, for kind information this entire material is free of cost you need not have to pay anything you can just access the uh, site and then get all the information for the benefit of uh, the student community especially this is the great service Uh, being rendered by dr amit tripathi my close friend uh, co who is the coordinator of this academy this is just i wanted to share for the benefit of the uh, younger generation thank you thank you sir thank you so much thank you one and all for uh, uh, excellent uh, webinar program and uh, i just uh, one thing i want to say because in the uh, this webinar is uh, started uh, with the resource person who is a uh, Uh, doesn't have any. Uh, they are not teached so far in the colleges. They may have visited as a special uh, lectures and all like that. But I thought that uh, uh, they are not teachers. They are field workers. Actually, they are actually in the field. They are working, um, uh, including me as a teacher. I used to say that we read textbook which was written five years before, four years before. But uh, the the purpose of calling you is what is in the current state status. in the field you will explain that is what the idea we have brought you all year and uh, it was an, a great success and we uh, we have successfully uh, uh, transferred the knowledge your knowledge to young minds in that way we are very happy and also a support i also give my thanks to my department staff members. 
college staff members and uh, our esteemed alumni and uh, alumni is my uh, our backbone so uh, yes. uh, we are actually starting all the work on the basis of the alumni i thank the ayya sami sir the president of uh, alumni association and general secretary sri ari aryan sir for uh, allowing us to uh, go ahead with this uh, thing and also support i i, I thank all the uh, geologists senior geologists who have come, came forward to support us by the means of uh, both means of technical and financial so uh, my thanks goes to everyone and uh, with this we i will end the session as uh, as usual the session with virtual was... tea with virtual tea <laughs> with virtual tea the <laughs> webinar is started by kick started by charles and it will be ended by charles charles you can close now thank you so okay. much thank you everyone thank you bye thank you thank you thank you charles it was a nice, nice corona <laughs> meeting nice corona meeting many more webinars and lectures thank you thank you professor college in the limelight Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, Which are leadership is now? Yeah. It's yeah. Nada's the leadership. Ah, uh, Gautam no. and Dr. Charles. Yes, sir. Yes, no, sir. Na, 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 Nada. Nada's leadership. <laughs> no, no. No, sir. This is Dr. Gautam's leadership. We are only soldiers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.